everyone, welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a mum of three from the UK. And today's home education video, I want to talk about our why. Now, um, a little while ago I talked about a course that I was building and that is full steam ahead now. Now kind of all of the personal stuff that we've had going on this year is evening out and everything's getting back to being normal, lovely, boring life. I was, I'm finally able to start a kind of filming these videos and getting them, getting them out there. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this and then if you sign up for the course, um, probably in January it's going to be ready, then we'll talk more about it in that. But right now I want to talk about our why. So my why, and then I want you to write in the comments below what your why is. I want to hear why you started home educating, if you, why you brought your kids out of school, or why you never sent them to school. I want to know, I want to hear what, um, what you have to say about the subject as well. Our main why, um, we have lots of reasons why we home educate now, but our main why that we started off with when we first kind of began the journey was because Charles was really anxious in social situations from a very young age, even as a baby. Um, he wouldn't look at people. If they came up to him in the pram, he wouldn't look at them. He wouldn't smile at them. He would turn his head away. He would hide. And that only kind of got worse, that shyness. And at first we were like, oh yeah, he's shy, he's shy and stuff like that and and it soon became apparent once he was about two two and a half to us at least to philip and myself there was something more going on than him just being sensitive and shy um and yeah so he was we we kind of thought how on earth is he going to cope at school when he really struggles at preschool to socialize with other children he just plays alongside other children and, and the older he got that he didn't the more he just continued to play alongside other children he never if they came up to him and engaged with him he would probably do it but he never engaged with other children on his own and we we're like how is this going to work at school how is how is that going to work for friendships where it's really important for children at school to have friends like how is this going to work for um like teamwork and things like that i just didn't know how he would cope and i was really worried about it and then we started doing some activities with him, preschool activities with him, and he would just zoom through these preschool activities. And I started giving him reception level activities when he was about three, and he was just zooming through them. Um, mainly maths and like early science things. He was just like, pium, 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 and wanted to do it all the time and zoomed through the things that I'd arranged for him. And I was like, okay, I don't know what else to do. Like he's, bored he wants to do this stuff but I haven't got anything else to do because it's all now too advanced for him um and yeah so it was really hard and I spoke to somebody I knew who worked at the local school that we we're in the catchment for and that he would have gone to it's the school that I went to as a child um and I said well if he's doing all of this with me now in like two years time when he comes to school what will you do with him and she was like, well, in reception, he would just, all of the things that he, that he's, like, he would just do it anyway. Even if he'd already done it, even if he already knew it, he would just do it anyway. There's not the capacity um, for him to, like, do something different. Because there's, at the time, I don't think it's the same now, but at the time the school was quite oversubscribed. So it just wasn't a, wasn't something that he, they weren't going to be able to do something different for him to, um, support his individual learning like it just wasn't going to happen in the same way as I could do it at home and after that I met somebody um uh, who has a little boy who is six months older than Charles um we're going to call her Elle uh, she knows if she's watching this she knows exactly who she is so hello <laughs> and um it turned out that she was also her and her husband uh, were also planning to home educate their little boy M, um, and the kids did not hit it off straight away because they both at the time they both had um, very similar personalities in the way that they struggled socially. But um, but I mean, what two year old doesn't like two three years years old? Like they both struggled sharing things, and it was really sometimes it was really hard work for us as adults to enjoy our relationship, which is still really good today, um, and also support them to try and be like, come on, we're friends, you have to be friends too, you know, that kind of relationship you have with some, some people and their children. So we really wanted the boys to be friends and we were getting really good friends. And then um, I had, I was pregnant and had Bessie and a short while after, Elle was pregnant and had her daughter, Kay. So, 
they were really close in age as well there's only about 18 months between them um, and Bessie adored Kay from the moment she met her and now they're really really good friends as older children you wouldn't know that there's an age difference between them because Bessie's quite little for seven in height and in like her head and um, they kind of match up really really well now Em and Charles are besties and it's great but uh, my friend Elle really kind of she compounded to me without me, she, like, she didn't like nag me, you have to home educate your children, but like her watching her and being like, it's not just me, there's someone else who wants to do it too. And we, you know, we developed this relation with the fact that we both wanted to home educate, that we didn't want to send them to school. And then we met, um, we met other people in the local community um, who, who were also planning to home educate their children and at first there was probably only four families maybe five um families in like that like we all went ended up going to this forest play group and um we met but there was like four of us and it was just us mums and our children who the older children um there was there was me and then there was three other mums and all of their oldest children were all similar ages to Charles. One was um Em was obviously like six months older than him, and then there was another child, we'll call him S, who is about a year and a bit older than Charles, and then there was A and she is like a month older than Charles. So like they're really, really all close, really, really like reasonably close in age. And um and then abilities as well, like what they were interested in and what they could do. So we all kind of really gelled over that at the time. And then um, all of us had more children. Like two of the two of the mums had one more child, and then me and the other mum had two more children. Again, me and the mum who had two more children, our children are very similar ages again. So Bessie is a similar age to their middle child, and then Albert is a similar age to their youngest child. So it kind of worked out reasonably well that way. Um, and in those early days, like we all really relied on each other. And um, one of those families, the one with three children, actually opened the forest school where Charles, Bessie, and I will all go. Where they've all went to the preschool, and they now um, they will all go to the home ed group come January. They'll all be at the same forest school home ed group. So um, I hopefully, I hopefully, I would really like to get them on the channel. The people who own the forest school actually because I, they have an amazing instagram um, i'm not sure if i can link things um but i'll either link it up there or i will put it in the description their instagram is the other path uk and it's amazing it's really really good um and if you're local to the area that i'm in you will you will want to check out outdoor learning company is the name of their business so check out the outdoor learning company and if there's something like that near you i really think lots of people yeah it's it's a great it's a great system it's a great um great company and just a great idea of having like forest schools and stuff so but yeah so as once that was the thing once i kind of realized that other people in the area were planning to do it too and then slowly kind of like the amount of people in the area that were like oh yeah i'm home educating too or who moved moved into the area like oh yeah we're home educating and then it like it grew and grew and grew and what was you know four occasionally like and then at, at 1.5 families of people who were home educating it suddenly grew to six and then to 10 and then to 20 and now there's loads of people in our immediate area and a bit further in the new forest who are home educating and that's amazing um there's loads of us now if we had a get together there would be people everywhere there'd be loads of people it, it would be really really quite um yeah it's, it's it's really good to have so many people now when you know almost like kind of nine years ago when we were first thinking about this it was like there is no one <laughs> there's nobody else um our whys now very similar to our pros and cons video that i've put up here that i did with victoria from educating the mad lads and that is the fact that we can have term time holidays um we can just disappear we can just be like you know what let's just do that week obviously i mean we can't now because phil has to book holiday like a normal person but we're like you know in the years gone by we could just say yep yeah, he's not working that week we're gonna go and camp or whatever i don't think we we rarely did do that just because it was a bit stressful but we had that choice and we always have that choice if we wanted to go to somewhere like center marks then we could go term time we don't have to pay double or triple the amount to go in the school holidays like everybody else um just a freedom a freedom for my kids to say you know what we need a man i need a mental health day i'm exhausted i'm 
really not coping well today and for me to say go on then let's just leave it let's just watch tv all day let's lie on the sofa under a duvet and just chill out and rest because everyone needs days like that sometimes and children are not able to have those days when they feel like them like adults can you know if you are having a really bad day as an adult and you're working you can call in sick and you can call in sick that's it but um and then no one you don't get like an attendance officer threat and you none of your colleagues go well you're not gonna get a certificate now for being here every day um you know you like you even still get paid for having a sick day so you know kids don't have that luxury which is i don't agree with um so my kids can take a sick day whether that's a physical sick day or a mental health day or whether it's just a stuff it let's go for a walk in the woods all day day um and i think that's really important and that's something i'm really happy about one of the other things is my two of my children as you know are on the autistic spectrum and they do struggle with waiting um things like waiting in queues obviously but also waiting for things like using the toilet having food having a drink um and sometimes just waiting to speak like they really struggle with that and that's things basic things that are expected in school you eat at breakfast and lunch you don't have a snack you wait until after school to have another snack obviously now you can drink throughout school and that's fine but when i was a child you could not you had your drink with your lunchbox and you had to go to the school nurse if you needed a drink. The amount of times I used to go, miss I have a headache, sir I have a headache, so I could go to the nurse and get a drink. Um, because I, and, and I sometimes I wasn't lying, sometimes I genuinely had a headache because I was dehydrated and, and I, th I think that shows the 90s for you doesn't it? But um, I know that's not the same now, obviously times have moved on and children are allowed to drink whenever they're thirsty which is great but also having to ask to go to the toilet, I understand why they have to do that in schools but being able to use the toilet is a basic human right, you should not have to ask to have a basic human right met. Um, you know, I always feel like there should be a toilet cubicle in the classroom so children can just take themselves to the toilet, um, that's really important to me but obviously that is not something that schools can I'm sure that teachers would love that as well, that they would love to be able to just say yes, go to the toilet, that's fine, uh, but it's not something that they can facilitate and I really feel like that's really important to me and it's really important to my children just to use the toilet whenever they need to, so um, that's another thing for us is adding to our why. The other thing is that it's a truth universally acknowledged that life itself, let alone school, can give people on the autistic spectrum or just neurodiverse people PTSD um, or PTSD or trauma, not necessarily PTSD but trauma and it can be micro traumas, it can be major traumas but it's still being forced to compress yourself into a neurotypical box is not healthy for people who are neurodiverse and it's not something I want for my children ever. I don't want them to have to conform with their adults, I don't want them to have them to conform now. So the fact that um, we are able to let them just be and be in all of their autisticness is really important. So, sorry. <laughs> um, Charles, for example, today I had to take him to the dentist. I, he went to a special care dentist, which specialises in people with special needs or different needs. Um, and he was pretty much silent throughout the whole thing. He chatted the dentist a little bit once he felt a bit more comfortable. But on the way home, he was non-verbal. He could not speak. Um, he nodded his head a few times and he kind of grunted at me, made a few like eh noises in trying to answer my questions. And then as he started to feel a bit more calm and a bit more safe, he would talk to me and baby talk, which I think is fine. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. I'm just like, this is what you need to do right now and that's okay. And my husband feels the same, but I know that um, this is something that would be less tolerated in a more conventional environment like a school. Um, and that's not, again, that's not something I want for him. I want him to be able to, if he feels like he can't talk, and if he, ans he can't answer a question, that I know that he can't answer that question right now, so I will just stop talking to him and I will wait until he's ready or I will make a choice for him. Um, and then when he starts to be able to communicate again, we can talk about it. But in a school situation, that's not something that's gonna work out. He would really, really struggle with that and he would probably end up having to have a one-to-one, -one, which is great, but throughout primary school that's great, but when he gets to senior when he got he went to senior school, that's then a lot more tricky. I don't remember I remember there being autistic people in my year and I don't remember any of them having a one-to-one, -one, but I do remember them struggling. So I think that it's something that um 
is now a lifestyle choice for us to be able to nurture their um their different their different needs and their different personality traits and all of that sort of thing that comes with being neurodiverse i think it's really important to me and to my husband that they can just be who they are and um what's the what's the saying those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind so um, that's our big why. I think it's something that I'm asked a lot um, in public, let alone um, on the channel or by email or Instagram and Facebook message and all that sort of thing. So um, I wanted to share that with you today, just have a little chat about it and I would love to hear your whys. If you don't feel like you want to leave a comment then please email me um, adventureallthewayuk at gmail.com, it's in the description or you can message me on Instagram, my handle is at adventureallthewayuk message me on Facebook, page is the same name as the channel, Adventure All The Way, um, and let's chat. I love hearing from you and I love um, hearing your stories. It makes makes me, um, yeah, makes me feel like I'm getting to know the people that I'm talking to when I'm talking to the camera. I can imagine who I'm talking to behind the, um, behind the scenes, so. I hope you're having a lovely week. The sun is shining here in the New Forest. It's absolutely glorious blue skies. I'm looking out of my office window right now and it's just absolutely stunning. There's hardly any clouds. The skies are just a beautiful blue and uh, it feels a little bit summery, but there's there was that crisp in the air this morning. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw I posted my dog walk picture this morning of my dog walking. Um, me walking my dog who's not come to visit me she had a bit of bacon for my sandwich and then disappeared um, <laughs> and uh, yeah it, i it was it was it was jumper and knitted headband weather this morning it was really there was a nip in the air and i was like ooh autumn's coming and it is maybon uh, t t uh on wednesday so we are excited to celebrate the autumn and uh, we won't do so maybon lasts from to start begins tomorrow really and then the actual equinox is on wednesday and then it lasts the celebration of maybon lasts all the way to the 29th so we'll be celebrating celebrating it at the weekend with a nice big autumnal meal um i'm really excited to do that and um, i think we're gonna get some autumnal decorations maybe depends depends so i'm really excited to um yeah really excited for autumn coming and my birthday is next week so um yes very excited for my birthday i will be 31 and we are planning to go to london for a birthday like a birthday treat for me we're going to go to the natural history museum which i can't wait to share with you in a video and uh, i'm going to have cake i'm going to be at rainbows on my birthday as i'm a rainbow leader so i'm excited as to what my fellow leader has planned um i did a surprise birthday party for her when it was her birthday a couple of years ago on a thursday so i'm a little bit i'm not a surprise i don't like surprises but um yeah <laughs> A little bit nervous about what she might have got planned as she's named it on our group that we have um we have events for each night and she's put secret night <laughs> I'm like, oh no. <laughs> so i'm a little bit uh yeah i will let you know after the fact what she got up to and uh yeah so if you have any guesses of what she might just might plan for us or maybe she's watching if you're watching claire oh, i'm on to you i know you've got something up your sleeve so i'm gonna i'm gonna go now i'm gonna upload this video ready for you and i will see you on wednesday bye